underneath here. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Oh. Oh. Over there. Get him. Get him. Yeah, get him. Get him. Just for the record, she has never gotten any close to catching one of those things. They fly, they run, like it is just not a thing, but she loves the exercise. I'm well aware of about 86.29% of you will not give a crap about what I'm about to talk about, but I've been obsessing about it for about two to three weeks now. So here's the video. I'm sorry it took so long, but I wanted to make sure things worked right. What I'm talking about today is Home Assistant, my Zigbee experience, and how I am basically trying to turn my lawn into like the smartest lawn of anybody I know. Which, hey, I get it. You're already bored. I understand. Just, just bear with me because you think about this. One day you might be having a conversation with somebody and you'll be able to bring this up and you're going to be able to say, you know what? I've seen it in action. Let me talk to you about it. This is a spruce soil moisture sensor. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. It's wireless. It sticks in the ground. It's probably not meant for what I'm about to use it for or what I have been using it for, but it connects to Home Assistant and it uses Zigbee, which kind of got me in the whole, well, it motivated me to stay in the whole Zigbee ecosystem. So I got Wi-Fi, I got Zigbee, et cetera, you get it. One, two, three, four, and the unopened one, which is I'm going to show you today is the fifth one. That means I have total five soil moisture sensors by Spruce that I am using to monitor the soil moisture level content, whatever, in my yard throughout various regions zones, etc. Now, the reason why this has taken weeks and I wanted to really test this thing before I made a video is because I bought one and I had all my doubts. I had to do some sealing things. I'll show it in a little bit, but now I have like went full send because I'm a believer. So uh, let's open this up. The first thing you should know is that this box is extremely hard to get into. So you will need a box cutter in order to open it up. So I recommend something, you know, with teeth because that actually allows you to get into the box and not actually, oh wait, did I just cut into it? Okay, I was being sarcastic and, oh, I didn't break it. All right, sweet. So yes, you just need a nice box cutter and a little bit of hand-eye coordination and or not being done. In the box, you get a user manual. I actually recommend holding on to it because it gives you some blinks things that you might need in the future. It gives you this little bitty magnet. See, a little bitty magnet, right? Because there's no buttons on this. All this does is do magnets. And then of course you get the soil sensor itself. This thing, I mean, hand for scale, right? Hand for scale. This is how this works. You see this, you see this right here? It's not. Okay, there's resistive and there, there's conductive, and I might be wrong here. So resistive sends a constant electric charge and it measures it like that. And that like erodes really bad. So this is conductive. I think I have that right, which means these don't erode terribly bad. But this portion right here is what actually senses the moisture temperature or the moisture content in the soil. So you will be sticking this. Imagine this is dirt right? Like there's mud all like right here, right? You're going to take your, your black thing and you're going to stick it into the whole mud thing like that. So if you were soil and this was the thing, it'll be sitting just like that. It has one of those batteries. That's not a double A or anything, but it's not like a watch battery. It's like a CR2 something, something, something. They say it lasts like a year or two, but you know, we'll see. It's CR one, two, three, A battery. Now they say you need a spruce controller to make this work. That's not true. Why? Because none of us here are idiots and we use Home Assistant and we're complete nerds. So this works with Home Assistant, but you do need a Zigbee coordinator, like a USB dongle or some other, you know that. You're a nerd, I don't have to explain that. You could also do smart things or Hubitat, but who cares? Home Assistant, nothing in this thing. There's no buttons, no nothing. I'm not going to open it up because I don't want to risk water getting into it. But this magnet, which I will not do it right now because I don't want to actually do it right now. This magnet touches to the top. Let's say my finger is magnetized. I'm just going to take this, finger this. And if you push it somewhere around there, you're going to get 
Green lights, red lights, status lights, blinking, whatever, that's going to tell you everything you need to know. It's all about a magnet, and if you lose this, you are absolutely screwed because you will have to find a different magnet. Any other magnet in the entire world will work. You're going to have to find that magnet and use that to make it blink. Now, before you can think that you can just take this, get it out of the box, and then just go run outside, throw it in your soil, and you're like, hey, that's cool. I'm done. I'm smart. I am going to try to make this a TLDR type of situation, but I almost didn't buy this. I really wanted a wireless sensor, and I wanted something literally in this form factor that could go into the ground that I can't worry about, like, stepping on it, running it over, whatever, and just snapping it for no reason. And I also did not want people driving past my yard seeing ginormous things sticking out of my yard these little sensors right here you can buy them on ebay for like 10 bucks like less than that like a pack of five it's all the zigbee stuff and the battery and everything that goes in the top is what really cost the money but the reviews on this thing you know everyone who has problems they complain people that love it don't actually leave you know compliments about the thing reviews were saying that this thing likes to leak sometimes it's got a little seal a gasket seal thing in there whatever and sometimes that gives way after a few months and this thing is completely ruined, which I steered away from. Now, look, I'm not saying that I went down like an eight hour rabbit hole of how to build my own sensor, uh, use Zigbee devices, start like soldering things together and like actually go through 3D print. I'm not saying that I just destroyed eight hours of my life trying to figure out if I could do that. The point is, at the end of the day, I figured, hey, if this checks all the boxes that I want in a wireless sensor, all I gotta do is make it waterproof. Did I mention that not only does it give you soil moisture, but it also gives you surface temperature, which is pretty cool. Like I said, I've had one of these things for many weeks. I just ordered four more, three of which I've already set up. I've had those running for a few days, and I'm gonna set this up with you today and show you what I did to try to avoid getting it to leak. That way it can last longer. Which, by the way, my whole 55-inch screen thing going on, which, why are my lights not on? There you go. My whole 55 inch screen thing going on. I've already made a custom integration theme like add on, like literally 100% custom changes colors with the whole thing. It updates. It tells me if I had a higher resolution, how long it's been since it's been updated. And I get this nice little thing right here. And then if I want to turn on the uh, sprinklers, I also have that thing right there. So I like that, but that is 60% done and I need to make it better. Oh, I've been kind of working on like thermostats, but I don't, I, 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 again, I don't like that. I digress. So if you want to do this in my attempt to extend the life and hopefully not leak, this is what I did. Let me show you. Dog, you just went out, calm down. So they have this thing, it's called Plasti Dip. You guys have all heard of it. Then they have this, right? This may or may not be the absolute best decision, but I've been doing, since I've had so many, I've put sealant in it, I've done some other things, I had some weird bubbling thing, it doesn't really matter. I decided to try Plasti Dip, and so far everything's been working really well. It just takes four hours to, you know, do the cure thing, and then, hey, here we are. I want all these little holes to have Plasti Dip all up in them, and then the little thing right there, just in case it leaks in, I also want that covered in Plasti Dip. So let me show you. I put this tape on the top, not a big deal. It's Plasti Dip, it comes off really easily. Then I put this right here because I do technically want it to still uh, seal that, but I don't want to get too far because I don't want to throw out the numbers. Look at that, look at that. Now, of course, with really any paint, but Plasti Dip in general, because it's like really rubbery, this whole marking thing off thing, I always take this off, or at least this is the first one I'm doing it with, but I've learned throughout all of the other ones to take this off while it's still wet. That way when you do peel it off, it doesn't mess up the whole rubber reseal thing that you kind of sort of want at the base of this device. So taking this off, that way it doesn't dry and blah. The little lights are somewhere in there. I think maybe I should probably push that up a little bit yeah push that up a little bit okay yeah so that allows you to see all the status lights and it doesn't impede it because you have you know a super thick black rubber coating that would avoid you know allowing you to see those status lights i think i'm just gonna have to put it in the garage it's probably the warmest with all the things that i've done i just you know you put a little bit of airflow on it put a little bit of heat on it and that thing does not take four hours per freaking coat so I want to get this installed by dark.
My temperature is probably just fine, but I'm gonna go ahead and just turn this up to like 70. This doesn't use power, but by the end of the night, I need to figure out some sort of a home assistant integrated thing to make that work with that and then hide the wires. Why, why do I still, I have no idea. That's just, that's so cute. Before I move inside and let this dry and then come out here and do more coats, I actually can sync it. So let me do a screen record. I'm gonna go through, uh, I'll show you. I don't have, I have a magnet here somewhere. Here you go. I put a magnet on the back of this, so it's always up there. Let me show you. Underneath here, oh, oh God, oh, God, oh. Ugh. Okay. She saved it. That was ridiculously dumb. Ugh. Good to go. Now let me show you the magnet thing. I completely lost the magnet tool thing. That's right, got another one right. Oh God, that is strong. How do you get that? What? Oh, come on, really? Like I said, underneath here, that's where the lights are. All you have to do is push this little magnet. Any magnet will do. And you should see lights. Did you see that? Yeah, see those lights? Then all I gotta do is go into my home assistant. I go over to my Zigbee controller. Uh, I go add device, let it search for a second because I already put it in pairing mode. It'll automatically find it, automatically negotiate and configure and all that other stuff. Then if you want to, you just give it a separate name and you can assign it where it is. For me, it's lawn because they're lawn sensors. And then after that, you go back to your Zigbee controller and you should see it in your list and you should be able to check what the current humidity, which is the moisture sensor, and the temperature of the device, which I have no idea how accurate that is, but it will show you the temperature. Now I want you to know, even though I went through and do the Hydro Dip spray paint, after that was all said and done, dried, and I put it in the dirt aisle, so you just dabbed a little bit of this into the top holes. So I don't know if the, any of this is necessary, but that's what I did. For installation, I suggest two things. One, a nice solid pocket knife, right? You could use whatever you want, but I like these, they're cheap, they're disposable. These are pretty strong, they don't bend. I use this to cut into the grass, shove this in and get to a certain depth or whatever, wiggle it around, make sure it kind of loosens up a little bit. And then I just used a basic butter knife to get it deeper because it needs to be probably about that deep. That way it actually has the opportunity to go into the grass and then part of the head can actually rest right on the dirt. And this is important. If you don't get it like sitting on something solid like the dirt or anything like that, if you step on it the wrong way, you may be able to like snap that sensor or screw it up. But if it's actually resting in the dirt, even if you run it over with a lawnmower or you step on it, it's already supported by the plastic piece and it's not putting all that pressure on the sensor itself. You do not wanna just take this and try to shove it into the ground because you will break the sensor. Also, you wanna wet the ground, let it soak for a second to make sure it's a little bit easier to work with. Then you do the whole stab your lawn thing to give it just something for it to stick into. And then you very gently push the sensor into the ground, make sure it doesn't have any major resistance so you don't break it. And then when you have it in the ground where you're somewhat comfortable, Take your magnet and actually just tap it. I'm assuming you've already paired it. Just tap it to make sure those uh, green lights, they flash twice, which means it can get connection. Now you need a good connection here, like a, ZB, uh, a Zigbee network. I have been putting Zigbee repeaters around the house, inside the house, and I have actually had to resort to some really weird solutions temporarily to get some of the sensors to work. Uh, like this one, which is wrapped in a bag, plugged in outside, but it works really well. If you have a Zigbee error connection thing, whatever, try while you're installing it and put it into the ground to just lift it up. We're talking half an inch to an inch at a time, then little tap it with a little uh, a thing. And if it connects while it's a little bit more out of the ground, that means you're really close to get connecting, but you're just a little bit too deep. This is a pro tip, so I hope you appreciate this. That outlet that I showed you that I have outside, I actually had set right here. So this is close to the ground. My backyard is right there, of course, but it's not very high and it has to go through a wall. That's not a big deal. However, if I had a switch right there, it would be elevated. And since the sensor is right there, because it would be elevated, it would have a much better chance to directly communicate, right? You put it on the ground, 
it's not capable of communicating very well. If you're gonna go down this route of building out a Zigbee network that allows you to you know, hook up these soil sensors throughout your yard, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the routers that you're using are probably light switches because they're elevated off the ground and they could probably give you a lot better signal and chance of not having to do some really weird rig thing that I did in order to get mine to work. Now let's talk Home Assistant. These are battery powered Zigbee devices, which means they go through their own little sleep mode. They only communicate what they need to. With these soil sensors, they primarily communicate when they, they sense drastic changes in the temper or the moisture of the soil. Otherwise, from my experience in the weeks that I've been using it, it seems like they go offline for 12, like 16 hours at a time. The problem with Home Assistant is that if you're using this as like a sensor entity, eventually Home Assistant will consider it to be offline, which will mess up your entire thing. So I have actually, through my experimentation, been going through this whole thing where I create a helper, right? Through Home Assistant, you can create your entity helpers. I made it like soil sensor number, and then I created an automation to where every time the moisture itself or the temperature for that matter gets updated, it will take that, it will update my helper number, and that way I can avoid having things like unavailable because you can say, you know, between zero and 100, and if it's unavailable, it's just not gonna send an update. Along that same route though, I did actually create more helpers, which were date and timestamps. That way, when it did send its update and it says, hey, here's the thing, it actually timestamped it. And in the future, I'm going to somehow roll that into like, you know, how long has this device been offline? I don't really know. I haven't gotten that far yet. I've been playing with a custom template card thing. So uh, I just wanted to make sure I had that timestamp just in case something goes offline for like two days, then I know it has a problem. Ultimately, here's my goal. Out of all the zones in my yard, I wanna be able to monitor each individual zone, specifically the spots that usually are drier than others. I wanted to monitor it and then once a day, maybe at the end of the day and in the morning or something like that. I want Home Assistant to take that reading and I wanna say, hey, this thing is at 30% or 12% or whatever. Let's give a deep cycle watering to get this thing back up. I already have a smart irrigation controller, but I want this to be super smart. I want to say, hey, your stuff's dry. You don't need to auto adjust it because I already know your soil's dry. So I've already did it for you. I haven't gotten that far yet. I'm still working on like, making sure I'm logging everything, making sure things are connected. I keep changing devices. Like I'm still in the infancy, even weeks after I've had this dang thing. But so far, I'm super impressed by just having that kind of access wirelessly all over my yard, even though it does take a little bit of like Zigbee weirdness in order to get that thing going. Side note, not all of these little devices actually show what the battery levels are. I have no idea why. Well, guys, that's pretty much it. Let's just say I have been impressed enough with this to buy five of these dang things at $50 a pop and spread them throughout my yard. And as soon as I do more testing, reliability, you know, yada, yada, finish building my Zigbee, all that other stuff, as soon as that's done, I'm gonna be tying these things in directly with my smart, my smart sprinkler and then potentially just seeing if I can water my yard just based off of the soil moisture content. So hopefully you enjoy this. If you like it, I will link it in the description down below. So happy home assistant. And as always, thank you for watching. Like and subscribe below and you have yourself a great day.